Hey folks, welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to be starting on my Journeyman Smith build number three. This one's going to be another Bowie, a little longer this time. I'm actually going to change the design a little bit. This is one of the original Bowie designs that I did. I think I might actually do a harpoon tip, so this might be straight. Um, and I'm not sure I'm going to do a recurve. And it will have this kind of guard, except it won't have the scallops on it. So some modifications, but I think it's going to look cool. We're going to be building this one with 80 CRV2. Let's heat up the forge, get it in there. This piece of 80 CRV2 is 3 16 thick. The first operation we're going to do is forge in the tip of the knife. This process starts by hitting the steel down at 45 degree angles right on the corners. And that starts to form our tip. Then we gotta flip it on its side and hit it flat just to make sure we don't start bulging the steel too much. I've had several viewers ask, why don't you just cut the end of the billet off on an angle and then you don't have to forge in the tip? Well, that's cheating a little bit. This takes a few minutes and it's kind of fun to do. I've almost got the tip formed here, and I'm starting to shape the knife a little more. I'm flattening out that part that kind of looks round that many of you may think is the edge of the knife, but that's actually going to be the top. Uh, I'm going to start to form the bevels and you'll see what happens. This is where I'm starting to hammer in the bevels and you'll see what I was talking about. As I hammer in the bevels on that flat part, it's going to curve that up, which is also going to force that other section to become the false edge and it'll have a curve going the other way. It also helps if you don't drop your workpiece on the floor. Now you can start to see that classical buoy shape on the knife. At the end here, on the edge of the anvil, I just put a mark where my ricasso was going to end. Now it's time to work on that ricasso area right before the guard. It needs to be a little narrower there, so that's why I'm working on this area with the cross beam. I did decide to put a recurve in, so now that's what I'm doing. I'm doing some final refinements on the blade before I move on to working on the tang. Off camera I used the angle grinder just to cut off this stock. Now I'm going to take it down with a hammer. I've reduced the handle area down to the size of the Ricasso. I'll do a little bit with the hammer, but I'm going to go to the press just to do a lot of the reduction here, just to save my arm. Now 
And now I'll just do some refinement of the tang with the hammer. I'm almost done the forging on this project. Right before this heat, I fluxed the billet just so I could get as much of the scale off as I could before I started grinding. Here we are after the forging. Uh, it's a little rougher than I wanted, but it'll do. Um, <clears throat> I haven't decided if I'm going to do the flat harpoon point or if I'm going to swoop it. So I kind of left it flat for now. I can easily um, grind that in. So I may use a new technique to do this instead of doing it by hand. So that's why I'm considering swooping it. Uh, the one thing, there's a, a little miss hit with the hammer here, which sucks because I wanted this, plus there's a little dip here. So the issue is I can't just bring, you know, there's, uh, because this was hammered down, there's a depression here, so I can't just bring this down or I don't want this in the Ricasso, this depression. So I think I'm going to surface grind it first, find out where I'm at and how far I can bring the uh, the Ricasso forward and get this because I need I need the the bottom tip here to be the lowest and then it swoop up. So we'll surface grind it, see where we're at. After it's all nice and flat on the surface grinder, I flip my grinder horizontal and start to put in a profile. You'll see here that I did decide to put in a curved false edge. Here I'm just refining the Ricasso area. What I decided to try this time was put my 10 inch wheel and put my rest on an angle and just run the blade across it. This actually worked out really well and I think it would become my new way to do this. Time to start grinding the primary bevels. Here it is after initial grind and the false edge. I was really happy how the false edge turns out, so I don't think I'll be going back to my jig. So uh, that worked out really well. Uh, you can tell it's full flat grind on this one. And now we're ready for heat treat. Here's some important information for those thinking of trying 80 CRV2. This stuff builds up a lot of decarb. It may feel like your blade isn't hard, but you have to grind off the decarb. Now I've done a bunch of grinding on the tang, taken off all the decarb. Now let's hit it on the HRC tester and see really where we're at.
This blade consistently came out at 65 and a half HRC. After tempering in the oven for two hours twice at 400 degrees Fahrenheit, it came out with a nice straw color. Now let's do some final grinding. Here it is after final grinding. Very happy with the grind on this one. Now we got to do some hand sanding. I know a lot of guys have a lot of grief about hand sanding, so I have a dedicated video coming up just on this topic. You think hand sanding's hard? Try doing it with paws instead of hands. If only I could train Molly to do my hand sanding. So I have the blade all sanded to 800. I got it taped up. We'll do final, final sanding uh, right before glue up, just to put the the marks, the, the grind, the sand marks going one direction. Um, next thing I'm going to do is the guard. The guard is going to be actually this shape, um, and it's just going to be a flat guard. Below it is going to be a spacer, so there'll be a spacer here. And then we'll work on the handle, which is going to be another piece of this ash burl. This one's kind of a orangey color but it looks really cool i like it i like the uh the little iridescence in it not iridescence but whatever you want to call that all right let's get to work so i've slotted the guard on the mill i don't bother showing you guys because i've done that a million times i've got my little sacrificial piece here because i'm going to hammer on it with this guy Okay, it's pretty snug. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna hammer it on it really, really hard to get an indentation of the ricasso onto the top of the guard. In last Thursday's video, I showed the new rotary tool that I got. That's what I'm using here to bed the knife into the guard. I'm not going into a ton of detail on the handle on this one. I'm going to do a separate video on how to do a Coke bottle handle. That'll be coming up soon, folks. Now I'm just putting the profile on the spacer. I decided to do something interesting for the trim on the spacer. So I went to the mill and just used this abrasive wheel just to put a little indent all the way around it. So just to complete the ensemble with the copper pin, what we're going to do is take some of this copper wire and we're going to embed it in this little channel that, um, that I ground into it. Let's give it a shot. Here we go, folks, final glow up. <laughs> 